Good morning, Rally Church. My name is Jim Collison. I'm a volunteer at Rally Church. I've actually gotten to be with you the last six or seven weeks in a row. Great to be with you today, and happy Father's Day to all those dads that are out there. Hope their day is great, and we appreciate them. Show them that you appreciate them as well. A couple of reminders, if you're visiting with us for the first time, congratulations on making it here. Pretty great. If you want to take out your phones and text the word NEW to 94090. Again, that's text the word NEW, 94090. You'll get, some, uh, you'll get a link back and a way to connect with us. Love to have you do that. You can also visit reality.church forward slash new. Lots of information for you there. Today, we continue in our summer series, Are You Still Watching? Nance will be bringing us a message in the movie from Field of Dreams. If you have any questions during the sermon, uh, we want to answer them. So there'll be some directions right there during the message. We are excited to worship together. So let's take a few minutes. Thanks for coming out. I'll see you at the very end.
for joining us this morning. Um, I love that song because it just emphasizes how much power there is in singing praises to God. And, you know, throughout the last few months, we haven't been able to gather like we regularly can. And so we, it, it's just easy to lose sight of that. But I think wherever you're at this morning, if you want to continue singing with us, that's awesome. Please do that. Um, but before we do, let's pray. God, thank you so much for um, the gifts that you give us, the, the ways that you constantly bless us throughout our lives. Um, with all the, the stress and the, um, just the, the chaos around us, Lord, I pray that no matter where we're watching this or wherever we're at, I pray that we can just focus in on you and we can, we can get rid of the distractions that can just con kind of haunt our lives. Um, pray that we can just sing these songs and to lay down those distractions, lay down anything that we may be needing to surrender to you, God, and just fully let loose in worship. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
him till he's used to the room. Hmm? Not completely. It's a good baseball. If you want him, you're going to have to dance for him. <laughs> I go to Kenny for the three in the corner. You got this, okay? No. Nope. Ubahasa. Miyokola. So he hit that first three. <laughs> Well, good morning. Happy Father's Day. We want to welcome in everybody that's watching online. And we do have some people here, and they want to welcome you in as well. So welcome all the people that are watching online. Welcome our, welcome our Millard campus. If you're watching this and you attend the Millard campus, and if you're watching this and you attend the Papillion campus, um, and if you are in our new online campus, you've never been to our building, but you consider yourself a part of reality, I want you to know that you are. Welcome, my name is Lance Birch. I am the campus pastor at Papillion and the lead pastor of Reality Church. And we're on week two of a series that we're calling, Are You Still Watching? And I guess one of the reasons we're doing this is because the, uh, you know, the pandemic made it to where everybody was binge watching some stuff. But we have other reasons other than that. Number one, we want to answer the questions. The church ought to be answering the questions that the culture is asking. We don't want to go out there and start as the church and um, scratch where nobody's itching. We don't want to answer questions that the culture's not asking. And one of the best ways to know what is culture thinking right now, what is society thinking, is to view 
uh, the media and and it kind of gives us a real big clue as to what they're doing the second reason is that all truth is God's truth there's no such thing as something that's objectively true always true that doesn't come from God and the reason for that is because God is truth he embodies truth and so we can find it wherever we go and the last reason is because all stories borrow from the story if you've ever watched a movie you know that usually movies follow this kind of um, pattern where things used to be great something went really wrong somebody comes on the scene and there's a fight and then things are restored I don't think that's coincidence. I think that's the age-old story that you find all throughout the Bible. That things have gone wrong, the Messiah comes, there's a fight, and things will one day be restored. So all stories that we read actually borrow from the story. Well, today is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, dads who are watching. Um, And I want you to know that if you have a father and you think they're the best father, then you're wrong because I have the best father. And dad, I hope you're watching this. It's funny when you're talking about your dad or when you're thinking back in in time how you have vivid memories of little seemingly insignificant parts of your childhood. And I remember some of these things in vivid detail. Like every time, uh, my dad used to take us camping a lot. And every time we'd be outside camping or in the front yard, I would always go down in almost a three-point stance and say, say one, two, three, go daddy. And he would say, one, two, three, go. And he knew what that meant. That meant that we were going to race. And I don't think he ever let me win a race. It was super important to him to, uh, to beat me down in that way. But no, it was fun every single time. I remember specifically faking being asleep when he would come home uh, later at night. I would like be on the couch and I'd be awake, but then I'd close my eyes because I knew that he would carry me up to upstairs to my bedroom so if they can be, it just I loved that moment. Um, I remember one time my dad was a salesman and he would travel a little bit. I remember one time he came home and he and uh, my mom were, um, you know, watching TV and, and I kept on sneaking into the room because I wanted to see dad and mom was telling me to go and dad said, well, what do you want? I said, I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And dad went into the kitchen with me and made me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and it was one of the best ones I've ever had. Um, Him in the front yard throwing an out route to me, him being Roger Staubach and me being Drew Pearson. Uh, Those small moments, dads, if you're watching this, those small moments matter. Like having a catch with your dad. I, I hope that we've all gotten a chance to see Field of Dreams before today. Uh, If you didn't, I will spoil this. It's been like 30 years now, okay? You've had a chance to view this movie, so I'm going to spoil it. I will tell you that Field of Dreams, while it's a wonderful movie, there are some historical inaccuracies in it. Um, For one, Shoeless Joe Jackson, pictured right here, he actually batted uh, left-handed. He was a lefty at bat, and he he threw right. But, um, so that's an inaccuracy. In the movie, they compared Iowa to heaven. And that's an inaccuracy. Basically, though, the movie is a story of a son separated from his father by an uncrossable distance. Ray Kinsella, the guy who's facing Shoeless Joe, has, uh, ever since he was a teenager, had a really contentious relationship with his dad, and he leaves home at 17. And before he can say he's sorry about the things that he said to his dad, his father passes away. He makes it back for the funeral, but he never made it back to say he was sorry. So there's this uncrossable distance, this relationship that's been broken, and Ray is struggling with that. And so he, at 36 years of age, decides to take up farming in Iowa because his wife's from Iowa, and he has a cornfield. And while he's out there in the cornfield one day, he hears a voice. And you guys might know what that voice said. It said, oh, there he is in the corn right there. If you build it, he will come. He has no idea what it means, but it haunts him. He ends up feeling like he's in danger of missing something important. He's on the edge of real life. Up until now, Ray, by his own admission, has just been existing. He's never done anything kind of out of the ordinary. Have you come to the point in your life Have you come to that place in your life of realizing that there is more to life and more to your life that can be quantified or measured 
Ray doesn't want to waste his life. And so when he hears this voice, it, it draws him. Hearing this voice a few more times, he's kind of drawn out into the corn. And he sees a vision of what could be. A baseball field where the corn used to be. Does that sound crazy? It was, very, it was, a, it was a lot crazy because every acre of this farm was needing to be, was needing to be harvested if he was going to make a living. But he, he sees this vision. That's crazy, but it's not nearly as crazy as the story that we're going to look at in the Gospels. It's not nearly as crazy as the voice that a man named Nicodemus hears when he tells him something that sounds way more impossible than this. In the book of John, there's a story in John chapter 3, and if you have your Bibles, open them up to John 3. There's a story of a religious teacher who is drawn in the middle of the night to Jesus. He's been seeing Jesus teach. He's been hearing the rumors of Jesus' Miracles, and in the middle of the night, he goes because he has this haunting feeling that he's in danger of missing out on something important, missing out on something vital. And that may be the reason you're here. That may be the reason you clicked on this or you're watching this. Maybe you're hearing something or feeling something. You think, I might be missing something in life. So he comes to Jesus and he approaches Jesus and, and he says, Good teacher. We, we, know that, we know that God is with you because of all the wonders and the miracles that you're working. And Jesus doesn't take the compliment in the way that we would and say, just thank you. He says, I tell you the truth, unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. It's like, what? I just paid you a huge compliment. And then Jesus talks about being born again. This, this is what he said. I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nick, who was a religious teacher, did not get it. He did not understand this. This was crazy talk. And now I know if you've been raised in church, you've heard this your whole life. But understand, this was the first time anyone had ever said anything like this. Think how this must sound the first time you hear it. That's as crazy as build a baseball field in a cornfield in Iowa. Nick was like, born again? That doesn't make any sense at all. You can't be born again. Once you're grown, you can't be born again. But Jesus knew something that Nick didn't know. Maybe something that you don't know. That there was, between Nicodemus and God, an uncrossable barrier, an uncrossable distance. Something had been lost. And Jesus was trying to tell Nick about it. Something beautiful and pure and joyful had been broken. And Nick had numbed himself with religion. He had numbed himself with telling himself that he was already in. Nick numbed himself with religion. What do you use? In Field of Dreams, the movie, Shoeless Joe Jackson, who was, maybe you don't know his story, he was a disgraced member of the 1919 uh, White Sox team, which was called the Black Sox because they threw the World Series. In the movie, in the movie world, the story was told that Shoeless Joe would, after he got kicked out of baseball, he would attempt to go and play for small town teams under a different name. It wasn't the same. He'd put on some weight. He couldn't get back to where he was. It was an uncrossable distance. Why? Because there was no forgiveness. He couldn't get back to where he was. And this is what he said in the movie. He said, getting thrown out of baseball was like having my leg amputated. It's like an itch you can't scratch. I've heard stories about people who wake up in the middle of the night and they can feel the itch, but they can't scratch it. And I want you guys to look at the longing in Joe Jackson's eyes when he gets a taste in this scene of what he's been missing. It's a scene from Field of Dreams. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna hit the curveball. Put one right here, huh? Right?
Right. You're a low ball hitter. And I just love this game. You see that? You ever felt that? Where you just have this window of opportunity to see what you're missing. Joe couldn't get forgiveness. Ray couldn't make up with his dad. And you can't get to God. Any more than you or I could be born again after we're grown. Jesus is telling Nicodemus to do the impossible. Religion is so doable, but born again, impossible. And that's what a relationship with God sounds like for a lot of us. If it's up to us, then we're doomed. Because you're far, you might know that you're a bad person. You might know that you've done some bad things. But here's the truth about you that you might not want to hear. You are far worse than you think you are. And Jesus here is telling a man who's a religious teacher that even though he thinks his birth as a Jewish man has him on the inside track, he's telling him, no, it doesn't. If you want to have a relationship with God, if you want to see the kingdom of God, you've got to be born again. And then he tells Nick a story to illustrate this, this uncross, uncrossable distance. He tells the story of Moses in the wilderness when the whole nation of Israel is under a curse, and that curse is snakes. This is awful. Snakes are biting them, and people are dying. And Moses is told by God to fashion a snake or a serpent out of bronze and then lift it up on a pole. And the idea is that when he lifts this serpent up, the cursed people, even the people who've been bitten, even those people that are dying, when they look at that snake on the pole, the curse will be lifted and they will live. The very thing that was killing them, an image of the thing that was killing them would be lifted up. They would look at the image of the thing that's killing them and that look of faith would heal them. This is nothing they could do on their own. This was something that God was gonna provide for them. And then Jesus brings the story home. He says, and as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And when he says the Son of Man must be lifted up, he's not talking about being lifted up in praise. He's not talking about being extolled or glorified. He's talking about the horrific death on the cross. That the very thing that's killing us, sin, is going to be lifted up on the cross and he becomes sin on our behalf. And the look of faith to him and what he can do can cross uncrossable distances. So that, he says, everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. The story of Moses is old, but Jesus' interpretation of that story is stunning and new. It's about faith and not works. It's about eternal life as a gift. In Field of Dreams is, if you build it, he will come. In the real story that gets borrowed from, it's if you believe, he will save. If you believe, he will save. Believing is that look of faith. Faith that Jesus is who he claimed to be. That he can do what he claims he can do and that he did it for you. Faith is that Jesus is who he claimed to be, namely God in the flesh. That he can do what he claims he can do, which he says, I can grant life to who I want to grant life to. I can give forgiveness to who I want to forgive. And, and, and you don't have, you can't get there on your own. You can try, but that's, you just can't get there. You need me. And that, he can, and that all of that is for you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus Christ knows you, knows, saw you on your worst day, and still took your sin, your rebellion, to the cross and killed it and proved that by being resurrected? John 12, 32 makes it even clearer, I think. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. You remember the scene in the movie where everybody is drawn, almost without them knowing why, to this field of dreams. I think that when people really get a clear vision of what Jesus did on the cross, that the Holy Spirit draws them to, to what Jesus did, to who Jesus is, and to the fact that Jesus did this for them. Something was built for Jesus, right? It was much cruder than a ball field. 
but it was a bridge across this uncrossable divide to the Father, to the Father that we had been living apart from. Look, I get it, especially right now, living for the now is tempting. Living for the right in front of you is tempting. But those years stack up on one another, don't they? And then you realize after a few years that you're missing something fundamental. And so I'm talking to you right now. And I'm asking, look, nobody's around you. You're just looking at a screen. But I'm asking you to be honest with yourself. Is life turning out the way you thought it would? Are all the things that you thought were going to meet your needs, are they meeting your needs? Are all those, you know, addictions and those, the, those secrets, are they fulfilling you? Is there an uncrossable divide in your life? Is there a hole in the center of who you are? Because there was with Nick. I think there was with everyone before they met Jesus. Crossing that uncrossable divide to the Father that we've been living apart from. And the point is that we're living apart from God not because of just circumstances. We're living apart from our Father is our own doing. We chose to. We rebelled. We sinned. That's what we did. Here's Ray in the van driving down the road realizing that his relationship with his dad went south because of his own choices. What happened to your father? He never made it as a ball player, so he tried to get his son to make it for him. By the time I was 10, playing baseball, I got to be like eating vegetables or taking out the garbage. So when I was 14, I started to refuse. Can you believe that? American boy refusing to have a catch with his father? Why 14? That's when I read The Boat Rocker by Terrence Mann. Oh, God. Never played catch with him again. You see, that's the kind of crap people always try to lay on me. I'm, it's not my fault you wouldn't play catch with I, your father. I know. Anyway, when I was 17, I packed my thing, said something awful, and left. After a while, I wanted to come home, but I didn't know how. I made it back to the funeral. Wanted to come home but didn't know how. I actually think there's a lot of people in the world right now when it comes to God the Father. If they're honest with themselves, they want to come home, they just don't know how. And here's Jesus in John 3 giving us the how. I want you to think for just a moment, maybe believe for a moment, that the God that you think is mad at you maybe loves you and demonstrated and showed that love for you. Yeah, you're not wrong about the fact that, that you've sinned and you've rebelled. You're not wrong about that. In fact, well, you're sort of wrong because you're worse than you think you are. Here's the good news, though. You're more deeply loved than you could ever dream or ever hope to dream. Listen to this in John 3, 16. Maybe you're familiar with this verse. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That sounds crazy. It's not about what I do. It's about what Jesus did. For Nicodemus, the voice was not out there in a cornfield. It was right in front of him, but it still sounded just as crazy. And the voice is right now right in front of you. Or maybe you even hear it calling out from what it seems like inside of you. That's the way it is for us right now. Jesus has made a way to cross an uncrossable divide. In the movie, one of my favorite quotes, uh, a guy who missed out on a major league career but became a doctor, he said this. He said, you know, his name was Moonlight Graham. He says, you know, we just don't recognize the most significant moments in our lives while they're happening. You're just watching a screen. What if this is the most significant moment in your life? What if this is the moment when eternity hangs in the balance and you can choose right now to be persuaded that you believe that Jesus is who he says he is, that he can forgive your sins and that he wants to. He's not mad at you. He's reaching out for you. The Holy Spirit of God is able to call to you right now wherever you're at. And if you believe, he'll save. And if you believe, 
then something eternal happens inside of you. I tell you the truth, Jesus says in John 5, 24, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. See, something calls out to us and reminds us of all that was good that could be again. What could be restored miraculously, the uncrossable divide crossed by Jesus himself. We long for that. And that's why our movies are about that. The, the, the undefeatable foe defeated. The, the, the darkest night and then dawn breaks when everything is hopeless and then hope shows up. We love that story because that story is written in our hearts. All stories borrow from the story. And here's how Field of Dreams resolves that. The uncrossable divide between Ray and his dad. And he gets crossed. Hey, Dad? You want to have a catch? I'd like that. At this point in your life, you may have a lot of stuff. You might have your dream job, but something bothers you at night when, you, when the editor of your brain gets turned off and you know, you know that there's a God and you know that there's an uncrossable distance between you and God. Stuff you've got, but peace you lack. Well, that uncrossable distance was crossed by Jesus himself. And I'm asking you to believe because it's not if you build it, you don't have to build a good life and he'll come to you. No, the gospel's way better than that. If you believe, he will save you. He came to you. He, he built the bridge and he's drawing you. Will you believe that? And if you do, I would, I would hope that you would let us know. You could email us at the church or you could download our app and fill out a next step card, or you can put this in any of the comments. If you're watching on Church Online, or on YouTube, or on Facebook, we want to know that you've, that you've made that step of faith, and we'd like to support you in that. So how, how do you do this? Number one, today is Father's Day, and so this movie has been a whole lot about our you know, earthly father, so here's one thing that I want you to do for today. Number one, have a catch with Dad. Now, some of you guys, you're not anywhere near your dad, so phone him, Zoom him. Maybe you need to say you're sorry. Maybe you need to thank him. But do this. Tell him that he was a good dad. Remind him of something awesome that he did. Forgive him for something not so awesome that he did or didn't do. Today, let that story, that, that small story of you and your, and your father. Let it inform the fact that you have a heavenly father who wants a relationship restored. And how do you do that? It's, it's this. You believe in Jesus. Scripture says, Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they will be white as snow. I can forgive you because of what Jesus did on the cross. So that's what I'm asking you to do. 
to, to come to Jesus and believe in him because you can't cross this divide on your own. You can't, but Jesus did. He built it. Would you come? Would you believe? The answer to what's wrong in this world isn't found in a list of rules. It's not found in a list of do's and don'ts. It's the gospel. Jesus alone has the power and the authority to change you at the heart level. He alone has the desire to restore the broken relationship between you and the Father. He alone can accomplish it. He's already been lifted up. Can you see him? He's calling. If you believe, he will save. Can I pray with you? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that you came to us, that you saw the brokenness, you saw the broken relationship, you saw the chasm between us, and you filled it. You built the bridge. You endured the cross. You suffered for our sin. You defeated sin and you defeated death. And I pray that someone here who's watching it will hear the, the words, but also supernaturally feel the power of the gospel and that you would change them right now like in an instant as they believe that they can't do anything but that you did everything. We pray that in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. Love you guys. See you later. Well, thanks again for coming out and being a part of our service today. We are glad that you could join us. And dads, we hope you have a super great day. A couple of reminders before you go. One, if your questions didn't get answered during the, the, the message time with Lance, he'll be on Facebook Live tonight. That's Sunday night, tonight, 8 p.m. Facebook Live. If you follow the church out there on Facebook, you'll get an automatic notification when it goes live. Big announcement, reopening is happening next week. We'll be back in the Papillion building. So if you would like to join us, service times are 8.30, 10, and 11.30 as usual. Remember, remember those normal times when we get together? And they are, we are hoping to be able to provide reality kits. Keep an eye on social media and your email. Updates will be coming regularly throughout the week. Reality Millard will be reopening on July 12th, and more information on that is coming as well. I want to thank you for your generosity during this time. It is so important, and your connection to the, to the church is so important, especially the generosity and giving. So we thank those who've been able to do that. We know it's been a difficult time for many. For those who have been able to do that, we thank you for your generosity. You can still give in two ways, reality.church forward slash give if you want to do that, or it's available right there in the app. Well, I hope you've had a great Sunday. Lots of things going on. Again, a happy Father's Day to those dads, and we appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you in Papillion next Sunday. Join us live, really live. We'll see you next week.